Hello, slow grind tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Shining Force CD, Book 1, Chapter 3, Battle Number 14, I think, with me, me Blue Ankylo, the Ankylo that is blue. Uh, how are you guys doing? We uh, did a little bit of inventory management between episodes so that everyone's got the right weapons. Also, I don't think we've talked to a couple new members, so before we start our episode today, let's say hello to the newest one or two members of the party. So, Kashing just joined? Well, I know I can help you out, he says. And Domingo goes, hmm, it's getting warmer, must be the greenhouse effect. Apparently. <laughs> He's a very magical creature. It's not just him lighting all the forests on fire. And, uh, I've devoted my life to... Yeah, we've, we've read everybody else. Okay, so it's just those two. I know we haven't added Domingo or Kashing to the team yet, but I'm trying to get people to level 20. And then the first person to 20 can get traded out... And then I can get everyone to 20, and then we'll do a big, grand, uh, exciting promotion party. Everyone all at once, where I can compare stats. It'll be glorious. We'll probably have a separate video just dedicated to it, because that's how I tend to do my Shining Force series. <laughs> so, anyway, we're, we're getting real close to 20, but it's definitely slow. And um, I'm looking forward to getting it done soon, seeing as we're getting all these awesome weapons. So, either this next battle or the one after it, I think almost for sure I'm going to try to grind up to 20, you know, between episodes. See that fort rising over the mountain? That's Gundal. They're in there, somewhere. Gates! Let's wait for the changing of the guard. Wait, who's Gates? It's Guardiana's Shining Force. Mbazu and Gapel aren't here. Guards, kill them! That's the guard's job, I guess. Okay, so we got a good foresty mountain map. That's kind of interesting. Probably good for Gaian, to be honest. Uh, so according to my walkthrough, there is one item we want, which is the Buster Shot, which may be the strongest ranged weapon for our promoted archer. And other than that, I don't see a lot of new enemies, right? Like, I see a Minotaur, and nobody else is going to give us very much experience. So unfortunately, this is not looking like a good map to level up on. Plus, it tends to go slow through all the mountains, so maybe this is not the one just yet. Anyway, let's uh, get started. I think... Oof. I probably want to send the uh, mounted units this way where there's grass and try to send the units that are better at moving through mountains north. Um, mages aren't going to be good at either direction, to be honest. So we'll split them up. Blue should be fairly good in forests and mountains. Shade will be better in forests than um, stock, I think. Wendy can be the left mage, and Stock is the left archer. Well, we'll try to make a balance split here. We'll see. Also, did Kashin just... Oh, where did you come... Did he bump somebody? Kashin? Who, who did he bump out? I'm pretty sure we're missing somebody, right? Let me just tally up everybody. Or was he the 12th member? No... He, he bumped out Gaia. You, I hate it when they do that. Because Gaia would probably be good in this fight. I was just saying, okay, you know what? New plan. I really hate it when, this happens every so often in Shining Force. Where they, um, force their way into your active team. And I hate it. So we're just going to do a little quick... Yeah, it's wiser to regroup. Alright. Kishing? I... You are maybe... Maybe that's enough to ban you from the team forever. I mean, as soon as you force someone else onto the bench without asking, that's just rude, right? Also, I'm pretty sure by aggressing, we do have access to the shop again. I don't know if I checked the deals. Never any good deals. What a... What a ripoff. Also, I haven't really mentioned it, but a lot of the items we've got um, can be used in battle and have some magic effect, like the Heat Axe casting Blaze 2. And if it gets cracked, we can repair it here. I just, I very rarely do that. I, it's probably a bad habit. Anyway, we still can't really equip anything new here, but... Oh, right, I was talking... Sorry, interrupt myself. There was one thing that I did say I learned, and it was that the Flail, I think, is an unpromoted item, actually. 
yeah, Mayfair could technically have equipped that early, which would you can see how much damage it would give her, um, which is maybe enough to hurt some enemies. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it, but uh, anyway, just kind of neat little point there in case you're wondering why I skipped that. All right, let's try this again. All right, I don't see any second knight this time, so let's just split up the way I was talking about before. Try to find a group of six or so for each direction. Uh, oh, also, Claude should definitely go north because he can fly. So, that'll be a decent enough split. Yeah, you can see Gaian here actually pretty good in the mountains. It's kind of why I wanted him over on a horseman who's terrible in the mountains. And also, like, seven levels lower. I haven't decided for sure if I'm going to grind up um, Kashing, and there might be another, uh, there might be another one or two old Guardiana forces that we might meet up with. How do we want to split the monks up? Uh, I think we'll send the monks to the left. And then, uh, Mayfair can go north. Mostly because she's so far back anyway. And she's probably as good as two monks at healing, so... I figure two monks one way, one proper healer the other way should sort of balance it out. I probably should just get rid of Sig, to be honest, but uh, I want to get him to 20 now. I'm, I'm, I'm committed. Alright. Gargoyles doing what gargoyles do. Alright, now, Roos is going to be slow no matter where he goes, but I think he will do okay on the mountain route. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of two squares per turn, unless you're blue. Or, uh, you know, a lot of beast man. Put her, yeah, put her in the forest. Alright, so Claude... See, there's another gargoyle that's probably going to come down and burn him again. So... I would like to put him in range of getting healed, possibly. Also, yeah, no experience. What a shame. You know, I was really hoping Shade would be able to move through the forest a little bit better than this. I'm not super impressed there, Mr. Shade. This can get one Gargoyle dead, at least. That's one less Blaze to worry about. So I'm glad we have Gaian. It's kind of our... Between Gaian and Luke, those are the only two really uh, fast, foresty mountain people. It's kind of like that mission you get Xylo on in uh, Shining Force 1 where there's just forests everywhere and Xylo is just amazing. I mean, Xylo's amazing anyway, but specifically also amazing due to uh, the map he joins on. So Cray is only six heals away from a level up. So I think no matter what happens, I want him to get to level 20 on this map and then we can put him to the side while we start leveling up one of the other... Uh, like, Domingo or something. Well, no, Domingo's already promoted, so he's kind of low priority for, for the level part. Alright, well, the AI was smart enough to put their worm in the forest. Get some land... land effect in there. Although, to be fair, I don't know for sure how well that works in this game. I think in Shining Force 2, land effect worked for sure. But in the very original Shining Force 1, the, the Genesis version, it seemed like it was kind of bugged, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Although I expect that was fixed in the Game Boy Advance remake. Pretty sure. So Yisha takes a big hit. Wow, that's two poisons in a row from these worms. I don't think we've ever been poisoned from them until just now. Alright, there's the uh, second gargoyle. We're definitely taking some damage here. Alright, so Yisha we want to be careful with. I think I'm going to move you here. Do I want to do this? Unfortunately, they're full HP worms and we're not going to really kill them or anything, so... 
We'll just be conservative with her MP. She's got a lot of MP, though. I like that. Also, two damage per turn from poisons. Yeah. Unfortunately, Wendy's in the same situation where... We just can't really get any good value out of her magic this first turn. Looks like Worms might take bonus damage from Ice, actually. Alright, Blue... Is, did he get poisoned? I think he got hit, but maybe not poisoned. So that's good. Nope, poisoned anyway. Sick. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to be getting a lot of XP no matter what we do, so it's just a matter of killing things sort of efficiently. I forgot to start my timer today. Oops. All right, now... Claude can take one attack from the Gargoyle, like a Blaze 2, but I don't want him to get hit by the Gargoyle and the Worm, so I want to be a little bit careful where I put him there. Although, it would have been nice if I could have sniped that Gargoyle right there. I think finishing this Worm off, though, will be worth it. And so Sig does have the detox spell. And I'd love for him to get a level up, but attacking now won't really give him any bonus to experience. So I guess getting rid of the poisons is as good as he can do. No? Wasn't she poisoned? Should have checked. Checked. There should be a symbol on their status screen if you're poisoned. Like... That one there. Okay, so no one was poisoned on the left group. That was my mistake. Alright, well Mayfair... Can't really go over and heal... Um, Claude, so we'll just heal up Yisha. Now, I didn't actually bring any antidote herbs, so the poisoning is, is kind of a surprise. I wasn't really prepared for it. Kind of hoping that the, uh, the gargoyle is dumb and attacks Claude on his own. So don't leave anyone adjacent, just let him take the hit. I wonder if uh, Roos is better at moving through mountains than forests. I never remember exactly how the terrain movement types works in these games. I don't know why a dwarf... I guess it's a dwarf, right? Dwarves are better in mountains? I guess that makes some sense. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Hey, Ape is getting a block. Good job, buddy. Don't see those very often. All right, so Cray, we're definitely a little bit short on attack power in this this side. With two monks and only five total members on this group, we're definitely in the slightly weaker camp. Although Cray, I'm sure could hit pretty hard if I can get him with an adjacent to somebody. Should check what his attack is these days. Alright, the worm goes for Yisha. I'm glad we healed her. Uh, I think even if the gargoyle goes... Oh, jeez, another poisoning. These worms are super poisonous today. It's terrible. Uh, even if the, the gargoyle goes after her, she shouldn't die. These guys did not line up very nicely for us. Alright, the gargoyle did go straight for her. I feel like I haven't done a great job of the strategy stuff this time around. You know, we're doing okay, but uh, the mountains have kind of slowed me down and messed up some of my plans. Some of my plots. Okay, well, I want to keep everyone together here. The goal will be to have a really nice aura that um, heals up like three or, three or four people.
Also, poisoning. That's great. Sure, we'll just let Blue kill the worm, just get rid of it. Get old Blue to hero, hopefully, soon enough. So, in this situation... Dang, no, no good targets, really. I think I'm gonna burn a little bit of MP rather than just ice level one or freeze level one. I don't know if that extra four damage or whatever it is is very important, but maybe that'll be the little difference we need. So at the very least, the enemies over here don't get area of effect attacks. Looks like freeze two did not do me any real benefit there. All right, so you're gonna move down. You can start moving up, I guess. Why not? You're gonna stay there for a turn. Of course, Sig can't get up. Can't do anything. Well, with double monks, we should be able to heal up fairly well down here. I feel like it's gonna take a while to win that battle, though. Alright, sure. Get rid of one of the enemies. He's not going to get in. I want to get to that level up. Oh, we could try Muddle. Sure, let's try Muddle. Unaffected. Unaffected. <laughs> That's why we never use status magic. It was even the right time to try to cast it. Could have made these guys miss or something, but... Yeah... Sorry, status tubers. <laughs> it's just not gonna work. Alright, and this is what we're trying to set up here. A very efficient healing turn. Not counting the poison. So I think we get a five-way heal here. That's pretty awesome. Hope you're impressed by that. Still only 25 XP, but still. That's the best use of 7 MP you'll ever get, I think. Alright, so they can do some damage to stock. Gotta be a little bit careful with that. Preferably they'll all group up for uh, Yisha down there. Or Wendy, that is. They won't. They'll just try to kill off stock. Good thing I killed one of those, uh, whatever they're called, night things. We could send Roos over. I don't know. Let's pull him back. No, let's keep him in range of the, uh, the healers. I want Sig to be able to heal him. Because we'll get a turn before the enemy gets another turn. And as long as we can kill, like, one pixie and then heal up, we should be fine. And we're going to let Gaian just start laying into the deadly board. We'll see how he does. It's your time to shine, beast man. Nine damage. Well. It's possible we'll get 11 damage here. Kill off the fly thing. The pixie, I guess. There we go. 11 damage. Nice. We're going to have Claude help out over here. He can just fly back and forth to whichever side needs him. I don't think Bruce is going to get a whole lot of value on this map. Just not a good map for him. Now, it would have been nice to send Claude up to help Guyan, no doubt about it. Also, that bull rider got his turn before we could heal anybody. I think. So let's try to finish off the other one, because it might be able to kill um, 
stock if it goes right away. So now that's not going to be so much of a problem. Oh yeah, Buster Shot. I had to make sure I had inventory. Well, my general plan has been to always have like about one spot open on all my melee, like my main fighters, like not my healers. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise that uh, we could pick that up safely. I did try to plan it out a little bit so that no, not too many people have four inventory slots used up. It was definitely nice in Shining Force 2 where you could equip your weapons and, and uh, rings and they weren't part of your like item inventory. They just went to an equipment screen instead. That, that, was, that was certainly nice. All right, right, right. Hold on, Sig. Eyes on the prize. Keep stock up. All right, Cray could go for an attack, but honestly, he won't kill him on his own, I don't think, so. Let's just try to get him to level 20. I think actually, you know, Domingo would have been really good on this map, because Domingo also counts, counts as floating or mostly flying, and uh, that would help him probably go up north with Gaian really well. So the fact that we didn't bring Domingo is probably a huge mistake. And Roos is just doing absolutely nothing. Honestly, we probably got Gaian killed up here by going so far up, because we can't even get to help him. And everyone's poisoned in the mountains. <laughs> ah, that's great. Sure, whatever, just spend your MP. Is everyone all healed up now, at least? Enough. When I'm just doing it for pure experience, we'll just skip it. <laughs> I'll show you most of the animations, but like, if we're just healing up for 10 XP, I mean, geez. No need to watch that every time. Alright, so Gaian definitely needs to get healed up here. He can survive one more round of attacks, but... He's not strong enough to just take these two skeletons on his own. I'm gonna send Claude back over to help. The biggest problem I had with Gaian is he just didn't get enough um, stats during his his leveling up from from war we started at like level. I can't remember what level he joined at, but whatever level he joined at up to level 17, 18, he did not get very many stats. So. And level ups with zero attack are real bad on a, a, a non-weapon fighter. It's bad enough on a weapon fighter, it's terrible when that's your only method of damage. So we can heal him next turn. He did technically dodge an attack. But he'll still die next turn if we don't kill something or heal him. Alright, and we're just going to try to get Kray his, uh, his XP that he needs. I think it's like one or two more heals for him. No point having him kill stuff because it's not going to get him any level ups either. Yeah, two more. He'll need to use one herb. That's no big deal. Alright, so let's start... Hmm, I don't want Yisha to tie either, but... I think I'll probably be able to put Blue in front of her and keep her safe. Oh, of course she's just gonna eventually wither away to the poison. Now, I doubt this will be enough to kill. Yeah. Deadlyborn seem to have defense statted meant for promoted weapons. I think that's safe to say. All right, here we go. I'm gonna keep you over here to keep Mayfair safe. Try to finish off one of these archers, or one of these, uh... You know what I mean, skeletons, skelebros. I just wish we got more experience. I wanna get everyone to level 20 and the game is not cooperating. So the last couple maps have been real kind of letdowns. All right, so Gaian can take one hit now, no big deal. And he got a crit. 
Now, if he has a higher crit rate or counter rate or something like that, uh, that would be good. It's hard to know, right? Like, just from just from playing one game. Because the, the crit rates and stuff tend to be like 1 in 32 or 1 in 16. So, you know, you could, you could still have a higher crit rate. Like, you could go from 1 in 32 to 1 in 16 and still only see one crit the entire game. Uh, so does, is that better or worse than normal? You'll never really know independently. But um, that's the kind of stat that might make Guyan a better character that I just wouldn't know about without a lot of testing. Also, Claude did a real good job flying in to save the day there. Quite impressed. Alright, we're going to pull off... See, unfortunately, Mayfair doesn't have the detox spell. So, I guess optimally, if you're, if you're, if you're relying on Mayfair as your primary healer, you should probably bring around a couple antidote herbs, either in her inventory or someone else's. Although, not you don't get poisoned very often in these games, but obviously it does happen sometimes. Level 19, HP 1, MP 1, Attack 1, Defense 1, Aura 2. Oh man, she is so good! She's got all the good stuff. Her spell selection is like... Well, dope, let's say. Pretty, pretty good. La dope. At least, you know, I will also admit that compared to Shining Force 1, the monks do have better spell selections because they all get the blast spell. And uh, that does give them at least some tactical options that uh, old gongy boy didn't have. Alright, so we got a ghoul from last time and a minotaur. Now, the minotaur is 38 attack. Eh, it's a little bit higher, but... Honestly, that shouldn't be too bad. The poison, yeah, we're just gonna have to poison it out. There's no more item drops, but I would like to kill the enemies in the top left as well. Gaian could probably use another heal. So Mayfair should be able to move two squares, so we'll just leave him there. And Sig is trying desperately to get caught up in levels. Should check his experience level, actually. How close is he? Ah, uh, probably not going to get it this map. Alright, so Claude, I'm going to put you in the mountains out of the way. And then we'll probably attack next turn. And Cray just needs one more heal. And this should be his level up, so I won't skip it. Oh, of course, he gets 9 instead of 10 this time. <laughs> and Mayfair just got her level up, so now she'll be 9 castings away from level 20, so probably one more level. I think next map, unless it's really bad, should be the level we try to get to the level 20. Because I think next map, we'll probably get all of our healers to level 20. So if we can just grind out the rest of the melee fighters and the rest of the force, basically, to, to level up. That'd be great. Alright, so we got... We're gonna let a ghoul just chomp on Apis a little bit here. Horse meat. The ghouls are pretty mobile, I have to admit. In uh, Shining Force 1, they were... Like, kind of the downside of the, uh, the ghouls and zombies, where they didn't move very fast. Whereas these guys seem to be pretty quick. Or maybe I'm misremembering. You know, I never know. Alright, so the Minotaur moved back. Ah, let's just go Blaze 3 here. Speed things up. And it does bonus damage because he's a ghoul. That's excellent. 18 damage is pretty good for Blaze. I'm... Now, if we had Blaze 4, we probably would have just killed him, but... Don't get greedy. But yeah, ghouls have a lot of physical defense, so the magic is, you know, that's it's good counter. Alright, blue, move up, protect the mage, maybe kill the ghoul. No, not even close. You know, I'm not actually sure... I don't think so, but, you know, in some games, the poison actually decreases some of your stats. I'm pretty sure in Shining Force, the poison just causes two damage per turn. But I could be wrong. 
which would sort of explain some of our weak attack rolls. It's more likely he's in a 30% defense land, and our characters just don't have promoted weapons, so... That could, that could uh, explain it. <laughs> I think I should have moved Shade a little bit further up. But... Should be okay. Alright, Sig... If I checked, he's like... 50, 40 or 50 experience from a level up, so unless I give him a couple more herbs, he's not getting to 19 today. Do we go for the... Yeah, let's start damaging the bishop right away. I wouldn't be surprised if killing the Minotaur ends the map. So I'd like to give the uh, the Western Force a little bit more time to, to win that fight. Pull back into healing range a little bit better. Trying to finish off one of the ghouls as we go back. Also, if we can make a horizontal line there, that would be nice. No one will be able to get double attacked. All right, and Mayfair, 19. So she's in another one of those... Oh, yeah, and Aura 2, by the way. I can't really show you. Same casting range as Aura 1, but it's a super wide area of effect, which is also pretty awesome. So, uh, costs a fair bit of MP, make no mistake, but it can heal up your entire army if you group them up together, which is, you know... Pretty good use of 11 MP. So she should definitely get to level 20 next fight. Alright, this Cray guy... Could put him adjacent here, blocking up an attack. See, I don't think Roos is going to be able to move this far. So by putting Cray... Oh, right, he doesn't have any... Uh... He doesn't have any MP. He could attack... But he won't get any experience for attacking, I don't think. This should get him a level up, though, for sure. And then he can block for people a little bit. Level 20, first one. MP1, defense one. Not a good level up. Alright, and the bishop comes in full heals. Maybe I should have attacked, after all. Yeah, I could have probably killed that ghoul. But we might get the ghouls to line up for a really good blaze or freeze from, um, from Wendy there. So, that's kind of what I was thinking. And that bishop sort of wastes a turn. No big deal. There we go. You guys line up like that. That's perfect. So even though they got healed up, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Now I can pull stock back, hopefully, and... Nope. <laughs> pull stock back, hopefully, so that uh, Roos can get up there. Too late. Alright, Yisha, you've got a decent sort of... Uh, spot here, to be honest. Let's use the last of her big MP spells. So I'm hopeful that Minotaurs will be the enemy that can get us to level 20, and that there will be lots of them in the next battle. I don't think we're going to kill it in one hit here. All right, here we go. Uh, if we had Blaze 3, this would do like 18 damage as we learned, but... Blaze 2 should still be pretty decent. Yeah. 10 or 11 against the ghouls is okay. All right, stock. He's gonna do heal 3 again. Um... He's also kind of... I want to kind of get him healed, so I'm going to stand here so that Sig can heal him. And hopefully we'll be able to get Roos in attack finally. He's, he's done a lot of running around this battle without really attacking anything. It's kind of unfortunate. Oh, come on, Shade. Classic archer, just like your father. We could run up there, but no, nah, that's, that's not going to happen. Mayfair, nothing explicit to do, so we'll just get a little bit of XP. Now, how far away is she? I technically could pump her with some pet medical herbs and get her to 20 right now, but I'm not going to do that either. 
I want to have the promotion party with everyone getting a promotion. It's, it's not a party with only one or two people get promoted. If we kill him, we kill him. We'll find out if this is the boss. Sometimes you have to kill everything anyway. Okay, so Minotaurs would definitely get us to level 19. That was 1 HP, 1 attack, 1 defense. And that was the boss, so we missed out on killing the ghouls on the left, but we also saved a minute, so I guess that's good. Oh, by the way, Bazoo said something, blah blah blah, the Shining Force legend is true! And then he ignites the self-destruct bombs and all the ghouls. Oh, hey, hey! Gates, why are you in such a hurry? Uh, they are killing one Guardiana captive for every one of Bazoo's soldiers you defeat! You just killed the entire army! Uh, we must free them. Lou, let's go. Gates the Gladiator. So that's our first... Well, Domingo was our first already promoted, but... I don't think magical creatures have a non-promoted form. I think Gates will be our first actually promoted character. If he's actually a gladiator. Let's have a quick look, and then we'll end our episode. He is definitely a gladiator, look at that. So, um, that'll be what, uh, Roos turns into one day. Except he's got, like, a better weapon. Does he battle axe? Like, he could probably equip the heat axe. So they both got battle axes, so that's a fair comparison. Roos is level 18 with 49 attack, 26 defense. And Gates is level 3 promoted with less attack, but more defense. That's not bad, I guess. I guess... The thing is, I don't know, I don't even really like having one warrior, let alone having two. So the chances of me using gates are very, very slim. Um, it just doesn't seem likely, and he is our first pre-promoted character that has the... Like, the game probably gives him stats as though he promoted at level 10. So, you know, give... give uh, Give Roos one or two more level ups, promote him, and then one or two promoted level ups. And I'm almost certain he will outstat Gates in, well, maybe everything except defense, but, uh... They still have low agility and low movement, which is rough. Sometimes older characters also have, like, agility penalties that are extra for them, because they're old. But, uh, anyway. We're not going to add him to the team right now. I might level up Kashing, I don't know. But we need to start, uh... We need to get that promotion party going. Also... Uh, everyone got poisoned last time, so before I forget, please help us, sir. Luckily, the cost for low to heal you, our healer, who just knows Antidote, is uh, not a whole lot more than just buying an Antidote Herb. In fact, it might even be cheaper, because I think Antidote Herbs are like 20 gold or something each. Maybe even 30 or 40, so it's actually pretty cheap to just do that. Now, we could start promoting people, anyone that's above level 10, but uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, let's talk before I forget. I know we're just ending the episode here, but let's see what uh, Gates has to say. Like my mustache. The women love it. <laughs> that's great. He's, he does have a mighty fine beard and mustache. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen a Shining Force member say that before. <laughs> Um, there's one more thing I was going to do. Items, give... So, just to see. I, w I was just curious. Promoted gladiators. It's five more damage. So yeah, that's that's a pretty nice little upgrade. Um, did I get anything else in that last... Oh, I got that bow weapon, right? So, black ring. I know I didn't talk about it, but that's a mage... Or a wizard only, a promoted mage. Demon rod is equipable for wizards as well, but might be cursed. Um, what else was there that we didn't talk about? The Buster Shot, promoted for archers. And I'm pretty sure Stock is what I consider our best archer, so I'm just going to give that to him preemptively. And I don't know if I'm even going to keep Shade at this point. I mean... Stock seems better. And, uh, I mean, I don't have a lot of spare characters. Like, okay, let's just talk for a second. I definitely want to add Domingo, so someone's got to go. That someone's probably sick. Kashing, maybe better than Gaian, so I could switch Gaian and Sig for Domingo and Kashing. If Kashing turns out good. I just, I tend to like knights, and he's our second knight. Um, I tend to like to have more than one of them if possible. Uh, other than that, there might be a couple more units that join up later that we want to replace, so 
Honestly, we'd have three wizards, so like Wendy might be replaceable at that point. Her magic selection kind of sucks. And uh, then we still have Cray. We'd have two healers at that point. Cray, Mayfair. If I find someone else that's good, I'll probably replace Shade. So Shade's like third or fourth down on the replacement list. But uh, I kind of like... The way these games tend to go is you tend to get like one good weapon, like a super weapon of each sort of class. So you want to generally keep around at least one, right? Like we have one magical heat axe. We should probably keep someone who can equip it. So don't get zero warriors. And we'll probably find a good, you know, arrow, like the buster shot. And we'll probably find a good glove. And we'll probably find a good spear. So, you know, it makes sense to have one of each kind of thing at least. And double up on the best classes, whatever they are. Anyway, enough rambling. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed. I'm pretty sure that no matter what, in the next battle, I'll show you I'll show you how to play it. Like, I'll go through it sort of naturally. And then I'll probably do a little bit of off-camera grinding to see if I can get everyone to 20, because it's definitely time. And uh, then we'll have a cool promotion party after that. So that's sort of my plan. Hopefully that works out. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and have a great day.